Uh, okay. Good morning. Uh, my name is Yu Minju. I come from uh, SoftTech China. Uh, I'm an assistant professor here, and uh, today I'm going to uh, present um, my presentation: uh, Challenge of Paleomagnetism Research, Barrison Magnetism. Okay. Today I'm going to focus on the, the paleomagnetism study for Barrison. Okay. And right now I'm with Professor Chinsong Liu and in South Tech, we build a new uh, lab called the South Tech Central Marine Magnetism. So if uh, one day the COVID-19 situation is released and uh, you are welcome to visit our lab here. And uh, today is a special day for me because uh, eight years ago, I attended the uh, IIM summer school and uh, I visited uh, IIM in eight years ago. So today I'm, I'm very happy that I can give a presentation for this conference. So here I show our group photo here. So I started my presentation here. And uh, as we know that the uh, geometric field is generated by the uh, convec convection of the Earth's uh, liquid outer core. And the, the geometric field is not stable. So we have some uh, behaviors such as the probability reversal, uh, the time scale is about uh, um, 100 million, uh, 100,000 to million years. And also we have a uh, geomagnetic excursions and the time scale is around the uh, thousand to uh, 100,000 years ago. So this is scale is quite big. So uh, it, uh, the, the geomagnetic excursion is a very interesting issue for our study. And another scale is about a 10 to 100 years scale, the secular variation. So uh, the human being has a, a long-term observation of the Earth's magnetic field about uh, 400 years. However, we know that the, the, the field is not stable. It varies with time in the, every moment. And another uh, recent scale, uh, we scale from uh, 10 uh, years to 10 years. And uh, right now, from our satellite observation, we found that the North magnetic pole is moving to Siberia and uh, the speed uh, is uh, quicker and uh, more and more quickly. Okay. So that means uh, this uh, magnetic field is quite uh, stable and it varies time. However, for a long, uh, for a decade of, of about one century of uh, paleomagnetic research and uh, the human observation, there's still a gap about the field behaviors. The gap here is the gap. This is background is a, a approximate uh, amplitude spectrum for the magnetic field. And uh, there's a gap about uh, one uh, from 10 to 1,000 years. We, we still not understand the behavior about the uh, the, the, the character or the behavior of the Earth's magnetic field on the least scale. Why? As we know that uh, the, the, we use a different uh, geological archive to study the pyramid record. So why we, do we choose spherosons? Uh, because uh, for the traditional archives such as lava, uh, lava is, uh, 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 we can use lava to get the absolute dating age of the, the rock. And the, the lava during the cooling period, it gets the PIN, so we can get directly the, the uh, Earth's magnetic field record. However, the lava flow, the volcano eruption is not continuous. It, uh, it uh, rubs sometimes and it stops, uh, it's not continuous records, so we cannot get a, 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 a good records from the lava flow. And the, the lava flow, sometimes uh, it will get. Uh, the, Heating from the later erupt lava flow and make a mound. Sometimes they will, will get heating and they get some uh, wrong uh, mistake. Uh, it's not the true signal from the lava flow. And then also the sediments, we, as we know, the sediments we can get continuing records. However, there are some uh, problems such as the blocking depth and the bio disturbance and the dating problems for the sediments. So we cannot get the high resolution. Uh, Paleomagnetic data from the, the sediment. Although it can, we can get the continued records. As we know that the sediments have some problems, such as the post DIN. Uh, we can, the, the, the disturbance of the sediment uh, by the basic uh, animals, such as crabs or ships, 
will suspend the sediments into the uh, button and the, the sediments will uh, re deposit again. This, pro this process will get uh, some mix of homogeneous uh, records of the uh, paleomagnetic uh, uh, records from the sediments. So we set uh, edge uncertainties and uh, smoothing factors in, uh, in the sediments. Also during the, the sediments uh, compaction during the burial uh, process, the sediments will be compacted by the gravity and all the particles will be flattened the alignment. So we'll get uh, the inclination error and get the shallow effect. And also, uh, if, uh, because we have post the DIN process, uh, the sediments will uh, get some problems even the sediment, uh, when we get the nearby sediment codes, uh, those, those paleomagnetic data are not duplicate. Sometimes it's not duplicate cause the, the smoothing or sharing effects. So we get a lot of problem in the sediment records for the high resolution paleomagnetic stuff. Also the chronology is uh, another problem. Okay, such as these two high resolution, uh, high deposition rates uh, sediment code, the records we can still find some uh, different, uh, 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 such as uh, 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 the Lachon event or the Moralek event in this record, we, we see uh, some edge errors or the high resolution uh, behavior will be smooth uh, or we cannot compare the, 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 the behavior of the magnetic field uh, under the 100 to 1000 Year scale. So it's difficult to let us to get this high, uh, uh, this uh, time scale from uh, uh, 10 to 1000 years interval. So why we choose Sparison? Because uh, Sparison is a, a, a carbon, uh, carbon meter deposit in a cave, in a, in a in limestone cave. So in this cave environment, the, the, the the, the situation is quite stable, so uh, there's no disturbance, and uh, the person uh, pays it uh, quite continue. So we can get a continuous records, and also we can use the Iranian dating technique, uh, the radio uh, technique to get the absolute dating age. We can get a real chronology for the person, and uh, during the person precipitation. We, uh, the, the, all the particles uh, will be fixed by the KSI crystals. So we will get a real time record of the geometric field. Okay. And also for the spherosons, there's no unmixing effect or no disturbance records inside the, 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 the spherosons. However, uh, the, the title of the magnetic mirrors in spherosons uh, uh, is. Uh, Still, uh, one uh, important issue because uh, uh, the, all of the person is not uh, formed in, in one environment. The, the cave environment is quite different from a, a different site. So, in, in some cave, we can get uh, the detrital sediments, and uh, in some cave, we can get we, we don't we can get the the, the new formed uh, precipitation uh, minerals such as graphite inside uh, the spherosons. And uh, so that means uh, the mechanism of spherical magnetic recording process is still unclear. Uh, from my side, I found that uh, many records of the paleomagnetic study for the spherical, we only can get a uh, whale well direction signal from the spherical. However, we cannot get the relative paleo intensity signal from the spherical. Maybe there is some puzzle here. But however, I, I think we still not clear understanding the, the mechanism for the spherical magnetic field. So in the future, maybe it's a, it's a target for us to think about this, uh, to study the mechanism about the, the, the spherical magnetic field. And uh, uh, the first uh, report of the paleomagnetic curve in some is uh, by Larson in 1980 and 1978 and the 79. So it's quite a, a 40, it's quite a long ago, about 40 years ago. 
and the uh, 1980s, there are some uh, several uh, uh, study uh, use of stalamite to, to get the epidemic records. However, after the 1990s, I think uh, nobody do nobody did the uh, paleomagnetic research for spares again because uh, the, 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 the because the the uh, the the sensitive the magnetic meters and the dating technique uh, were still under uh, development. So uh, at the last stage, it's difficult to to uh, get any advance for the paleomagnetic study in person. However, uh, recent years, uh, many people have tried to find back the person for the, the paleomagnetic study again because of the relevance of the magnetic meters, right? because of the speed, uh, the superconductive uh, magnetic uh, meters, can, we can uh, take the very weak signal from the, our samples and also the uranium orientating technique. As the development of the universal dating technique help us to get the well chronology for the, our samples. So such as uh, in 2012, OSET AO, they use a sample from product, uh, to, get, uh, to get the records of the black events from the, the one uh, star mite. And LAPSCO AO, they published uh, in general, they, they found the Bashong events and uh, they get a uh, precise uh, age of the Russian event. And also the Chicago uh, group, they, they use the uh, person in Brazil and uh, found uh, the, the variation of the South Atlantic anomaly. And from my side, I use a uh, Chinese person and uh, uh, one meter long uh, sample and we found uh, uh, the post black event inside this sample and we found that one reversal event here and it, uh, it took very fast, just uh, about a uh, hundred years, the priority can rotate from normal to reverse. So this is quite amazing. We use a lot of uh, dating uh, points to, to check this uh, rap very rapid reversal pro process. Okay. So until right now, I found that there is uh, some challenges for the person to study. So today I, I, I'm going to present some issues here and maybe can help you to, to uh, improve your study and, uh, and, and more people can join the, the study of the in in, uh, in this person. So I, I'm going to mention the, uh, propose the four issues here. First is we have to find the suitable samples. And the second that we have to uh, think about the cutting strategy for our sample. And further, we have used uh, the dating technique. It has a very has a, already uh, presented about this uh, part. And also we need a uh, development and the high risk, high sensitive instruments for future uh, study. Okay, the first, most of the important things we have to find a suitable sample. So run, this slide show a, a, a paper published by Eckler Fong here. Uh, he's also here uh, today. And uh, for the, he, he found the letter, uh, the where uh, some stalemite get uh, uh, where so it, it cannot provide an uh, other uh, paleomagnetic direction. So, First, we have to use fresh sample for our study. So if you find uh, this sample is weird or is it a color is uh, reddish, it maybe means that this sample is not an ideal sample for you to for the preliminary study. And second, uh, we have to uh, check the cap uh, situation for the stalamite. Uh, some cap, we know that it's, um, it's a flo floating type stalamite and they, in the cave uh, during uh, the rain, uh, rain season, uh, this cave will be covered by the, the water. So some sediments will be covered by the, the, the sediments, the recycled sediments, such as uh, the, the work uh, published by Josh and uh, uh, another work here. And uh, let me just mention about the, the, the washout effect here. So you can see uh, in the in the in the photos here, uh, low cross grain. Uh, the particles will wash out 
to the third part of the city, uh, the, 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 the third part of the dolomite. So if you want to study uh, pedometric study, you have to avoid to use this part because this part we can get a lot of coarse grain here and uh, this wash out effect. That means uh, this particle is not uh, uh, deposited uh, at the uh, first time. So that means you will get a leg here, a edge leg here. I, I just uh, think about this part. So, so this wash out effect in the central part. So that means we have to, to choose, a, a, if you, you want to use a, a dolomite in this case, you have to choose a large one and uh, with a, a bigger diameter samples because uh, the wash out effect will influence your, 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 your record here. And the second uh, layer bonding surface effect. So for the stalagmite, uh, because of the, 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 the environment change, the stalagmite, the, the water flow into the cave will change. Sometimes in, in normal state, uh, the stalagmite will grow uh, continually. However, if uh, the, the situation changes, uh, such as uh, the rental, uh, a lot of precipitation period or some uh, dry period, the separation will, the surface of the separation will change. Uh, during the uh, uh, large uh, precipitation periods, because the rapid flow will uh, drip into the cave, it will reduce the 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 the, the, the uh, in the in the water or like, uh, reducing the 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 calcium uh, tail side, uh, 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 concentration in, in, in the water. So sometimes the, the spherism will start to dissolve. So we'll get the, the type E surface. You can see here the, the black lines, and this is the type E. This means the spherism uh, is start to uh, dissolve, uh, was, was, was dissolved. So this part is, uh, there's a height here and uh, some, something will disappear here. And, and another type is type L. If the, the, the in a dry condition, the surface will uh, the, the growth rate will decrease, and this surface will be uh, like this way, and then we can see the growth rate quite slow, and then we will see height of here. So that means uh, when you uh, cut the, your sample in half, you can check out uh, the different uh, the boundaries layer in uh, layer boundary in, in, in your stalagmite. And uh, this means each part has some uh, hiatus here. So, and uh, also the, the star might, uh, the, the deposit of the star uh, tail side here, the, the shape will change it because the, the dripping water will move the, from the different parts from the top of the, the cave and the, 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 the shape of the star might will change it. We will uh, move slightly and there's some part here, you can see uh, there's a, a very low, a growth rate here and the, uh, the layer we can see uh, there are some uh, accumulates over here and the type of E uh, sometimes uh, here you can get some uh, uh, dissolved uh, problem here so let me say this part is not good for our study and uh, uh, there's a uh, horizontal layer here is an uh, ideal sample for earth so when you cut your sample you have to uh, care about this part is, uh, we, we have to, to find out the, those uh, boundary surface here and uh, to check uh, if there are any hiatus over there, okay. And uh, it's better for us to use the horizontal growth layer here. And then you have to find uh, the candle shape stalagmite because uh, that means uh, inside uh, the stalagmite you can find a uh, horizontal layer inside. And uh, we need a large size sample yeah, because uh, for, for the, uh, uh, big di diameter samples, stalagmite, you get a large uh, area of the, the horizontal layer. Otherwise, you get a, a bend effect inside a central part of the stalagmite. It will influence your, your records, uh, your records. So, second is uh, cutting strategy. So, in the case, uh, if you find a good sample, the first, you have to, to get an orientation of this sample because of, for, for pedomagnetic study, the orientation is quite important. The orientation of the sample is quite important. So in the case, you can use the compass to, to align the north direction for, for your sample. And if you use a, a foreign uh, 
parameter, you can find its, its original position in the case and you try to turn back the orientation and then you can use your compass to, to get back the, the north direction in your sample. So when you get the sample back to your lab, you have to cut it. So uh, in traditional cutting machine, we use the, the round saw and the, this kind of saw will uh, destroy the, your sample and uh, you will get a lot of uh, sample loss during cutting. And it's difficult for you to control the cutting process. Sometimes the, the sample will broken or sometimes you, you will, uh, if you, you, will can, you cannot cut the, 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 the sample in a very straight lines. So here I, I'm going to show you a new machine that is called a diamond wire saw. And the, the diamond wire saw is used the, the diamond wire. The, the diameter of the diamond wire is about the 0 0.25 millimeters. So the, the wire is very thin. And when during your cutting, you, you will, the simple loss will be just a few uh, uh, zero point, uh, about 0 0.3 millimeters, you can get this. Uh, you can reduce the sample load during your cutting process. Okay, so first, uh, because uh, the orientation for paleomagic study is quite important. So first we have to do, uh, think about how to cut our irregular shift thalamite, uh, follow the, 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 the growth to the particular the growth uh, axis to cut the sample into two. So uh, I used some, uh, Stuff to help to to hold my sample. I use this. Uh, I depend this. It's kind of holder or kind of you know, tuning like a tuning fork, and I can I can fix my sample and I can rotate it to in in, in two D uh, dimensions. I can, so I can find out where is the uh, the cross axis and uh, where is the direction of north to cut my sample. And the diamond wire, it can be very low speed with uh, water. And so that means uh, during cutting, the temperature will not rise during the, the, the cutting process. So it's cooling process here. And uh, he, you can see the, the middle deep photo here, there's a line. This line is, uh, is the direction of the nose and uh, in the center part of the, 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 the star mites. And I use a laser point a line, uh, to, to project on the spare sense and try to align the, 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 the gross surface in, in the spare sense for each part so I can make sure the direction and the, the cut surface is, uh, is, uh, uh, is parallel. So finally, I can, I can cut a, a big, a long, this time at about the one meter long, and I can cut the, the, the orientation. I can, I can cut the center in well orientated state. So finally, uh, we have to choose the part for the panel study. Uh, so for my side, I, I prefer to cut the central part because in the central part, we can get the horizontal layers inside and they use diamond wire so we can uh, get well orientation the samples and the low sample loads during the cutting process. And uh, for the next step, we, if we uh, get the central part of our sample. Next step is going to slide it uh, into a slab. However, uh, this, this, this part is quite important because uh, it, the, the thickness of this uh, small slab is depend on the magnetic concentration of your sample. Okay, next I'm going to talk about the reinforcing dating here. Uh, let me just uh, present, uh, uh, mention, uh, give a talk about the reinforcing technique. So I'm not going to the detail of this part, but here we also have to focus on the, the layers of the bending layers here, because each bending layers we, we, we find uh, it, it, it always have uh, some hiatus during the layers. Okay, so when you cut in your sample, you have avoided to 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 uh, you have to avoid to to cut. Your sample to get a, a sample uh, uh, between the, uh, between these uh, layers, boundary layers here. So you, if you find a boundary layer, better to for you to cut uh, follow this boundary layer. Okay. 
and uh, for the chronology, because uh, this part always has some hiatus during the boundary, so you have better to to uh, did more, uh, do more, uh, select more dating point here in this part, and then you can make a, a precise the, the chronology for your sample. Here's an example from my, my study in 2018, and we find a half of here, and because I, uh, you can see there are a lot of uh, bending, uh, uh, layer bending here, boundary here. However, uh, sometimes uh, my, my sample, because it grows very fast, so uh, less to no uh, appearance has for each uh, layer. And uh, we did a lot of dating. And then finally, we'll find the layers, uh, the hiat, uh, clear hiatus here. By, by we use a lot of dating points to approach this uh, hiatus. And finally, we find a layer and we get the, the up and the down button symbols to get the edge. So there's a clear hiatus in this part here. So uh, if you, want to um, improve your chronology, your, your time resolution of your, your sample, it's better for you to get, select more uh, betting points for your insurance dating. Although it's spend a, a lot of money, it's very expensive, but it's worth it to do it. Uh, I think it's worth it to do it. So uh, a very important part is you have to find a high uranium concentration stalamine. So if, uh, uh, if when I went, went to the field in the cave, I, I always uh, find some uh, foreign parts of the stomach and uh, broken to, to piece uh, on the ground and I will get some piece from the button and I'm going to check the uranium, so the uranium concentration of this sample. If the, the, the uranium concentration is too low, that means it's not the ideal. Uh, uh, sample for us to see. So I will uh, let it out. Okay. And uh, do more dating points. It's good to you to get uh, high resolution data and you get a uh, uh, good uh, chronology for your sample. And the checking the layer bundling surface in your sample. That is quite important. And then finally, we have to use the uh, sensitive uh, instrument to, to get the, the very weak signal from our follow my sample. So right now, uh, the 2G company, they, they, they have a new new generate, uh, generation uh, uh, squid. Uh, it's called a rift system. They use this system, uh, the, the, the background is quite low and we can get a very uh, weak signal from our follow my, like my, my samples, I can get, the, even though the sample is quite weak, uh, the, the, the remnant uh, intensity is about uh, 10 power minus five ampere per, per, per meter. However, we still get a, a one component uh, CHI here. So that means uh, this machine is quite powerful for us to, to, to take a weak signal from our samples. So here's my conclusion. Yes. So Theresen is the ideal material for us to study the high resolution dynamic uh, recurs especially for the long-term BFS, the secure variation or the geomagnetic excursion. Okay, and then the person mechanism is, uh, can open a new spec for our paleomagnetic body in the future, especially for the, the model guys. They, they, they want to get the, the, the records with uh, uh, precise ages and the, the reliable direction result. Yeah. And uh, I also uh, propose some challenges for the person making a study here. And I hope uh, uh, in the future, more people can join to do this research. And uh, I, I just uh, propose some uh, issues for you to, to care about for you to do the period migration study for the straw mic. So here's my uh, uh, suggestion here. And uh, hope you can, can get some uh, useful information from my suggestion. So thank you your attention. Thanks very much, Yiman. I appreciated that very much. Um, it would be great if there are questions for Yiman to, to come up, uh, just to, to kind of get things started. I just wanted to acknowledge and appreciate uh, uh, 
one of the, the areas that you spent a little bit of time on, and that was discussing the different um, calcite fabrics and the sort of micro textures that can form as you experience changes in the, the delivery of water into a cave system. I think that's that's really important. I think if if people are aware of those those patterns and those changes, they're more readily identified and we can more accurately interpret the magnetics. Um, for the most part, a lot of the paleomagnetic analyses that have been generated using stalagmites have, have used massive columnar calcite fabrics, which is great because they're massive. There's not a lot of porosity and permeability for fluids to move in and, and create secondary magnetizations. Um, there yeah. are other kinds though, uh, dendritic, fibrous, um, macritic, I think is another one. And those have a higher porosity to them that sometimes can allow fluids to come in and opens the potential for secondary magnetization. So I just wanted to say thank you for, for bringing up some of that calcite fabric work. It looks like we have a, a question from Roger Fu. Hi, Roger. Yeah, how you mean? Um, yeah, I just have a quick question. So you you spent a, a good amount of time talking about the importance of you know finding the horizontal layers, right, to avoid any kind of bias. Um, so just out of curiosity, like, what is? Do you think there's some spaleothems in some conditions where the carriers are autogenic? So in other words, they they're not detrital; they actually form in situ. In which case, you might have a CRM uh, that might be insensitive to uh, to uh, you know, flow on the on the surface. Is that a possibility, or is it is this a problem um, for all all spaleothems? You think? Uh, for me, I I don't think they will have some CRM uh, at the surface here because uh, the calcite crystal is quite uh, solid at the surface of the part. So uh, during the, the welding process. Uh, some parts of the, 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 the scale side will be removed. And uh, however, if you cut the, the sample, you can see just uh, the thick, uh, uh, where uh, the layer on the top of the sample, but the, 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 the bottom part, the, the broad part, the sample is still fresh. So, uh, I think it's just like the, 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 the sample by, uh, reported by Eric Fong, it's a quite old sample. So you can get the, the, the sample going to a reddish condition. So I think it, maybe a little sample, there's some crack or some uh, fractures inside. So the, the, the water or air can and drain to the, this sample. So they get a very reddish stalagmite and they get a weird condition. But, uh, uh, in generally, uh, some in the cave, uh, I found the low sample. Uh, the welding process just uh, happened and found the surface of the climate. If you, you just uh, just uh, keep out these layers, yes. Eric, did you want to make a comment? Oh uh, yeah, I've got some comment. Thank you, Yumin, for your presentation. Very nice and and uh, good, good resuming the the, the topic. It's not actually a question, it's just some comments just to open the discussion. Um, first, I'm happy that you show my work about the Portuguese stalagmite. And well, after, after I publish, uh, after we publish this work, I actually have some uh, conversation with Josh. Josh, I, I, don't, I don't know if you remember, it was in the Santa Fe New Track. Um, and uh, who actually told me that maybe the fact that the direction are not reliable in the case of the stalactite is not necessarily due to the weathering, but maybe because the mechanism of acquisition is different in stalactite than in stalagmite. Because magnetite is a navy mineral, they maybe uh, have not the capability to be uh, correctly uh, retained in, in, the, in, the, in the calcite layer. But it's interesting because this stalactite was on the ground and was severely weathered. So this is something that maybe in the future need to be explored. Uh, how weathering of full stalactite or stalagmite on the ground? Because when you are flooding, okay. when you have a flooding, you can you can um, alter your 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 stalagmite on the ground. But it's just an observation. And and the second point is about the fact that you focus on the central part of the speleothem um, because mm -hmm. of the reason you mentioned and it's and, and it is your correct um, 
but I just want to call your, your attention about the work we published. This is not only to do self-promotion, but I, I take advantage to do some self-promotion. We published mm -hmm. a paper in 2017 about Pont et al. And we show that actually um, incl magnetic inclination can be based if you are sampling the border, because uh, there is probably some physical mechanism that makes the magnetic particle rolling up on the border. And we find that the inclination are based on the border. And this is why we suggest that uh, sampling the horizontal layer is most uh, suitable. So this is what just an observation. And you write uh, that the central part is, is the best uh, location. Um, but yes. this also to call the attention of people that this is something that uh, should be explored deeper in the future to see how BAs the magnetic direction can be depending on their position or on the border. Yeah, yeah. But okay, just some comments. Yeah. No, no. Would you like to go ahead? Yeah, I also had a, a comment. Uh, thank you very much for your talk, and thanks uh, to Larry for the introduction. Uh, and to tie the, these two talks together, uh, my comment is about stalactites, which um, we haven't focused on, and for a good reason. I think there's there are problems. In, in dating them because the mechanism of the formation is not as simple as stalagmites. So I think we have to first figure out if it's worth actually looking at stalactites for magnetism um, because of the complexities of the, uh, you know, the positional environment um, regarding these two problems, dating and then um, the unknown acquisition of, of magnetization. Uh, thank you. Okay. Any other comments before we move on? Josh, uh, just just a small comment about the, uh, I think it was a very nice talk by Yamin, uh, uh, resuming what's the uh, interest of studying stalagmites. And, uh, but I think there's another thing that we need to, to point out is that stalagmites differently from some, some sediments, they have a very, very uh, homogeneous uh, magnetic mineralogy. That's being observed almost everywhere. So it means that uh, for uh, pan intensity, relative pan intensity, it's also a very nice target because then uh, what we do is to uh, try to, to normalize by, by the concentration, but we need to be aware that uh, it changes if the uh, magnetic mineralogy changes as well. So in mm -hmm. the skeletons, usually the, they are so uh, homogeneous that uh, we expect to have a uh, good record also of the padding test. Fair point. Dario, did you have a comment? Yes, I did. And I wanted to follow up on uh, the point that Eric Font had raised, and uh, this could also involve the work of uh, Roger Fu. And mm -hmm. so when we sample a stalagmite for a paleomagnetism, typically the specimens will be more tabulate, tabular rather mm -hmm. than equant. And therefore the orientation of these tabular specimens will be different whether we're sampling the horizontal layers or the edges. And I'm wondering if this may affect the distribution of the magnetic particles within the sample and therefore the magnetic direction or inclination. And maybe it's something that we can overcome with a QDM. Or maybe a comparison has been made already. Uh, I think some paper published by Ju. 2013, and uh, Epiphone published, just mentioned about the, uh, the paper of 2017. And I think a lot of paper are quite uh, uh, well quality, and uh, they, they mentioned about the, the mechanism of the, the KSI formation, uh, crystallization process for the person. And uh, from the, the paper of Ju, uh, 2013, and they found that the, the, the remnants. The, 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 the anisotropy of the remnants for the stalagmite is quite uh, homogeneous, mm -hmm. and uh, for the for the uh, an anisotropy of the, the kelsite crystals, they found uh, there are some uh, different uh, direction from different parts in the, in the center part, in the side part of the stalagmite, mm -hmm. and we found some different. But for 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 magnetic particles uh, alive on the surface of the spherosome, 
uh, they they did not find any uh, any software for this uh, remedy application direction. Yes, so it's quite a, I think it's quite an important uh, work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, I think we should move on to our next speaker if, if possible. Uh, this is good. This is a sign there's a lot to discuss about these kinds of materials and how to 